All right, my popular demand, we've got a service video here for you guys. Um, rear shaft seal. So uh, this is Sid's old Viper. It actually started its life as an N19, got upgraded uh, to a Viper in a past life, and uh, pretty kick-ass scooter still. Uh, we're just doing some uh, some maintenance on it as we don't know the, how, how old the shaft seal is on it. And uh, while I was looking around the shop for a scooter that needed a shaft seal, and none of them did, but this one's going to get it anyways because somebody wanted to see a video. So um, this is a service body. Uh, we are going to eventually make these available to uh, dealers and shops and some guys that want to do the DIY thing. I always say uh, do this at your own peril, right? So we're going to tell you how we do it, but if you have trouble and you flood your scooter, this is all on you you want uh want it done right take it to your local dealer if they've done a service course or send it in to us for the old cadillac treatment but anyways this is sid's old machine i got the service body on it you don't necessarily need it but it, it just makes it so much easier you can flip the scooter over and now i'm not sitting on my wires or anything like that again not entirely necessary um a lot of times in the field if i've got to change one of these i'll actually just plop the whole back end into the uh into the scooter body and uh, let the scooter body sort of hold the thing up at working height. We've already gone through taking this all apart and put it together. So I'm gonna skip that and we'll show you where we go next. Okay, I've got my prop and hub off. This has the original Delrin clutch, which was an upgrade from a injection molded plastic clutch. You can see these tiny little cracks here. They do not propagate beyond where the clutch gets um, gets thicker so this is perfectly good to reuse if it really bothers you we do have uh the upgraded all aluminum clutch available uh but like i said you're kind of um really don't need to i'm not i'm not putting one in for sid it's he's not worth it so um but if you see this clutch or the injection molded plastic clutch you're going to want to look for the snap ring um on the shaft later models that had the green aluminum clutch does not have typically do not have this snap ring uh and there were some scooters where the snap ring groove isn't even cut into the shaft so um if it doesn't have the snap ring it should have a delrin washer that looks like this in place of it sorry about the focus so that'll go underneath between the drive pin and the face of the seal um and then there is no snap ring don't try to put one of these in with a snap ring it's one or the other so and in fact in this case if we really wanted to if we were upgrading the clutch we put one of these in but again not upgrading the clutch today so we're gonna pull the drive pin out might have to work out a little bit if it's in salt water or full of Ginny springs trash or whatever um set that aside and grab my snap ring pliers we're gonna pop the snap ring off Once I get the snap ring started, I'm just gonna pull this whole seal spring right up out of the way. That takes the snap ring with it. Now I'm gonna reach down and I'm gonna pull if I can on the seal. Some cases the seal slide right straight up and sometimes it won't. In this case, it's grabbed on pretty good. Uh, in some cases there was a little bit of scotch seal that was put on the shaft to uh, aid in sealing. So I can't pull that up. So now I'm gonna start getting a little rammy. Take a screwdriver, go in from the side and just nice and gently start working around it. You're not trying to get right underneath, you're just trying to get along the edge of it. And once it starts moving, you can get your fingers around it and it slides right off. Now these are a um, graphite and... Um, ceramic seal is a really hard material it's brittle but it's really hard and the graphite is brittle as well and the two will kind of work amongst the work against each other um, and form basically a perfect surface the surface is so perfect that if they're touching one another um, you can actually pick up the inner seal by the outer seal in a brand new set um, anyways this stuff looks perfect honestly there's nothing wrong with it but we're in here now so and this is this is at least 12 or 13 years old, this machine. So, um, you know, it's been used a fair bit, probably not used a ton, but used a fair bit and uh, been cave diving, been in salt water, been in fresh water, been taken care of, but 
Like this is not something you want to be changing annually. Sometimes if you're best to leave it alone, if it's not uh, giving you any grief, but, but certainly we're, we're happy to do them. Um, so you'll see the Scotch seal. We'll get back into this in a minute. Um, this is absolutely necessary, but it's a, a very soft um, and easy to remove material, but it's very reliable and it, and it, um, and it tolerates the elements really well. So before I get too gung-ho, I kind of take the tip of my screwdriver and I work it around a little bit just to sort of loosen it off. And I'm trying to get as much of it to go off in one piece as I can. So now we're going to have a quick look at the seal. That's your new seal that's going to be pressed into the, um, into the tail cone. And this is rubber. And then inside that rubber donut is a um, is a ceramic. We try not to handle them as much as we can. Um, try not to have grease and stuff on your fingers, but they're again they're fairly tolerant. Just we do not want to chip or damage or scratch the face of that. That's the most important thing. But this rubber is going to seal to this housing. Um, but the Scotch seal is going to aid in that. So, uh, anyways, I just want you guys to see what that rubber kind of o-ring or rubber donut looks like that's holding that um holding that inner seal in place so anyways eventually i gotta just get in there right so if we've got the motor out we'll press it out from the inside or push it out from the inside but in this case i can't so i'm gonna work the rest of this stuff around just because again i'm trying to get this all to come off as much in one piece and save me clean up later Okay, so I've worked around with my screwdriver and I got most of the stuff released from the tail cone. And if, if I kind of get a little diggy with it, you can see I'm getting down to that um, rubber um, rubber donut. And now it's time to just plunge in with our screwdriver and pry it out. We, we want to be a little aggressive, but lean on it, but nice too I, I guess it's hard to describe when you work for, with your hands for a living it um it's just something we learn kind of how hard to push or how hard to pull or how strong stuff is but that's come out one piece i got very little cleanup work to do now something i want to mention is this right here again is absolutely necessary that is a delrin washer we have those in stock as well if you lose it but it's got to be in there and it works as a shim it does two things. It works as a shim and it prevents this little snap ring here. On this motor, there's a snap ring. On newer model motors, there is not a snap ring retaining the armature of the motor. Um, but it's going to do two things. It's going to prevent that seal from getting pushed all the way down against that snap ring. And then that snap ring is going to try to wear at the back of the seal. The other thing it's going to do is actually literally shim the seal out towards the propeller so we get the right preload on that spring but uh so that's in there and i'm going to leave it i would normally leave it alone but i'm going to take it out and show you guys so this is just about good enough to put our new seal in so here's another look at that delrin washer and you can see there's a snap ring in there that's retaining the shaft bearing and then there's a another snap ring that's retaining the armature they said that that snap ring that is on the shaft is not necessary. Pardon the focus. This little guy right here is not necessary, and you might not see it on all scooters. It depends on what model of motor that's in the scooter. So don't worry if it's not there. All it does is prevent the armature from coming out when you pull the motor apart, and it actually um, makes servicing it a bit more of a pain. So... Um, in a lot of cases, we don't put them back in, or like I said, our newer motors don't even have that snap ring because it's basically useless. There's a thrust, um, like a Belleville thrust um, uh, spring in the in the top, pushing against the top bearing on the motor. Um, so again, this is completely unnecessary. But this outer snap ring is necessary because it's retaining the tail shaft bearing. We have a quick look. This looks really good. There's no point, no signs of, of um, water damage or anything like that. So, uh, again, hard to get it to focus in there. So, I'm going to take a little bit of brake clean on a, on a paper towel. I'm going to clean this up just so that it's, there's no 
dirt or oil or greases from my finger and fingers and then we're gonna put the new guy in so something I've done here I've gone all the way around with this product called Scotch seal this is the stuff you want because it's not gonna dry really hard but it's really durable like I said you saw the stuff that came off this was at least 12 or 13 years old we're gonna drop that guy onto the shaft And then we're going to stop and say, shit, we forgot to put that Delrin spacer in there. So we're going to lift that back out, then drop the Delrin spacer in there, then drop our seal back into place. And then we have a special tool that we've made. Again, it's going to be available for, uh, for purchase eventually. It's going to be part of a dealer service package. Um, but you could press that in with um, basically anything that is flat and smooth. So you could you could probably get away with a socket um you, you really want something with sort of a soft face um, but the right socket like with a, a deep socket with a 3 h drive would probably slide over that shaft and press it in with the 3 h drive facing down that would work um you could turn something up out of wood i'm sure there's probably a guy who's going to 3d print something and post it on our uh, on our page here anytime um but you just want something that's going to press that sort of evenly but it's going to press against that spacer and that snap ring so it's going to end up in even anyways here's a look at the tool we use it's uh it's seen a few seen a few shaft seals in its life and it's just a piece of one inch um one inch stainless that's been uh bored and turned down so i'm going to slide that over the shaft and then i'm going to press down basically with all my body weight not even like I did that on the bench. A lot of times I'll put them on the floor and that's pressed into place. So you don't need to hammer it in. It's not um, it's it's not a super interference fit. It's just enough to compress that rubber. So then the next thing I'm going to do is take the scotch seal. And this is not easy to do with one hand. And I'm going to work into here. And I'm going to lay a bead around. This is the one that's the technique. Around this seal. So the technique I used to actually lay that bead in really nicely is I actually hold the scotch seal tube with my hand and then with my other hand I actually rotate the scooter by the shroud one way or another until I've made myself all the, my way all the way around. Then if there's any spots that need just a little bit of manipulation there I just come in with like a popsicle stick or a, a toothpick or something like that and just make sure that Basically, you want to be sure that it's covering up the black. It doesn't have to be pretty. You saw how it looked when we got it apart. But you got to know when to quit, too. That is done. That's done perfect. But I say the Scotch seal is, is absolutely imper important. Um, Tecna's, uh, Mako's, uh, American Underwater Lighting Machines, Gavin's, uh, you name it, they all use the same process. They all basically use the same seal. So... Uh, it's worked for 40 years, despite what one guy on the internet is going to tell you, he's wrong. You want to use the Scotch seal. Don't get silicone. Don't get something you can get at Walmart or, or an auto parts store. Got to get the right stuff. This is one of those spots not to save, not try to save a few bucks. It will last a long time. Um, it really doesn't seem to go bad like maybe some of your other diving chemicals do. Uh, like say Aqua Seal or something like that, that sort of when you open it, it's shot like the next day. I do have a hack for that. When I'm not using this stuff, or this stuff, or this stuff, or any of these products, or even this, this is like really expensive stuff. This right stuff, that stuff's like $35 a tube. I have a spot for it in my beer fridge. So that'll keep it from going bad. I think it was Doug... Um, Doug Mudry ta taught me that. He used to do that at Extreme Exposure. They keep all of their dry suit uh, fixy chemicals in the fridge. And it never went bad. So, or drastically extend the life of it. So, anyways, uh, that's pressed in. Pardon the lights here. For some reason, our LED lights do not get along with the, uh, do not get along with the camera. So, I got to turn those off. So, then the next step, we've got our, um, we've got our seal pressed in is we want to put this guy in. Now, remember before, it was really difficult to get this guy off because what's been happening is a little bit of Scotch seal was getting on the shaft. And the whole thinking on that was it will help seal this piece to the shaft. And that's got like a rubber gutsy inside. And it makes sense. But what 
I find what's happening is it prevents the seal from moving up and down on the shaft. And really, like once this is in place, it really doesn't move much. But you want it to be free to let that spring push it as hard as it can against the uh, ceramic face. So what I've been doing is taking a tiny, 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 tiny bit. I don't know how many times i got to say that. Of white grease. Like, like that's too much. And I wipe it on the shaft way above where my seal is going to ride. Just a tiny, like, th like that's, that's all we need, right? Just enough to make it a little, even that's too much, right? That's just going to make this seal slide down so much easier. So you're going to have to work at it a little bit and lean on it a bit. Don't get rammy. Don't hit it with a hammer. This is again where our seal press tool works pretty nice. And once it gets into that grease, there it just goes. Then again, I'm going to push down with about all my body weight to be sure we've seated it all the way. And now we're ready for our snap ring. Or if we're going to be replacing the old clutch with a aluminum clutch, I would be putting in a uh, Delrin. So again, Delrin washer, if we're going to use the aluminum, um, the aluminum clutch. So I'm going to show you what that's going to look like. So there is what it's going to look like before you put the aluminum clutch on. You get Delrin washer pressing against the um, seal. And then our aluminum clutch is going to drop into place, engage the drive pin, and then we're ready to put our hub on. But again, this one is going to get the original original to submerge um, Delrin clutch. In which case, we get rid of the Delrin washer and we are going to install just this old snap ring. Snap ring goes on. Good time to check your drive pin. Yet another submerged drive pin that is neither bent nor broken. That goes in. Dower and clutch goes on. These used to be known as a like a WKPP clutch. It was kind of a thing back in the day. You had to know somebody who knew somebody to get you one. So, uh, anyways, it's partly why it's going back in because it's just bloody cool. And then, uh, then we're back into the reassembly per uh, the other video. Something else I wanted to mention, this has the old Oceanic injection molded plastic hub, which is eh, 12, 13 years old, still ticking. Um, updated newer models have a Delrin hub, and they do look different. That is our Delrin hub. It's certainly more durable, and it has an upper piece too that... Um, co-mingle you need both halves to make it work if it has a delrin hub you use seven belleville washers if it has the oceanic injection mold of plastic you use nine belleville washers so uh we'll do another video probably on hub assembly and i want to do a video on the hubs because this really is kick-ass strong and all the efficiency testing that we've been doing lately um yeah, it's still, for being about a 35 or 40-year-old design, it's still pretty efficient, especially uh, with some of the stuff we're learning. So, anyways, that's ready to go on. We're going to put the back end together, and then we'll jump over to a vacuum test. Okay, vacuum port comes out. Uh, Vipers and UVs have a independent um, compartment specifically for the motor. Magnuses do not. Um, so, um, don't let this confuse you too much. There is a way to vacuum test the shaft seal on a Magnus, but it requires a special vacuum testing hull or the old school draw latch hull like this one with a vacuum port. So, um, anyways, not a big deal. Uh, we're going to, again, set, be setting dealers up with some service tools so you can test that shaft seal. Again, every machine we build or every machine we test uh, or service uh, gets vacuum tested at very least. 
So we thread in our vacuum test port, hook it up to our Mighty Vac. We have these vac kits in stock if you want one. Um, it takes a bit of time. It really takes a long time to pull a, pull a vacuum, do a vacuum test on the Magnus with the hand pump. I kind of have a little cheater um, electric vacuum pump for that because we test a lot of Magnus uh, back ends. But anyways, we're going to pull this down. We're going to keep pumping this till our hand gets sore and then we're going to keep going. So I'll pump that till I get to about 16 inches of vacuum. Um, you can go further than that, but 16 is just kind of the number I shoot for. And 16 is one more than 15, or I'll be sure I'm good and over 15. That's just sort of what I do. I'll explain that here in a minute. So um, if there is any moisture, so if you had a leak uh, or it's an extremely high humidity environment, what has happened is as we pull a vacuum, we have reduced the boiling point of water or the boiling temperature of, of any water that is inside this uh, this hub. So it's actually inside this, this, this compartment. So it's actually a great way to dry your stuff out. Um, so, um, we pull the vacuum and if that vacuum drops by one or two points within the first couple minutes, in a lot of cases, it's not a leak. It's just that humidity being drawn out, um, and basically a, a liquid turning into a vapor and reducing the pressure inside or actually increasing the pressure, reducing the vacuum by increasing the pressure. There's a, uh, some, some mathematical not so for you. Anyways, I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. I'm going to come back, see if I'm at still well above 15. Uh, if it's dropped off a little bit because of that uh, evaporation, I'm going to pump it again, make sure I'm well over 15, and then I'm going home for the night. The next morning we come in, we're going to check it. If we haven't dropped below 15 inches of vacuum, she is solid. She's good to go. Um, if it does drop, we're going to do more investigation. More times than not, after a seal replacement, if it leaks vacuum, not water, it's actually the O-ring on this acrylic lens is occasionally will get nicked where these um, draw latch screws were tapped. So I found that more times than not, I start having a panic attack, get ready to do the seal again. And uh, and then I've actually pressurized these. I've got a little uh, little fixture that holds this down prevents it from getting pushed out by the pressure and i'll find little bubbles coming out of here uh, so i just replace that o-ring and we're off and running again but so don't panic um that's another one where if you had a vacuum hull you could actually um pull this out pull a vacuum on the whole back end um to help you isolate that is the leak here or is the leak in the shaft seal but anyways pretty confident by the way that's pulled a vacuum and the way it's sitting there and not dropping off that we've got a winner here, but we're going to leave it for a bit and then um, check it in the morning. If she's good, it's going back together. So uh, I said 13, 12, 13 year old scooter, at least, well, at least 12 year old scooter. Um, again, it was built as a N19, not a Viper. So the, the, the Venom was done. Look at 2013 or um, so, uh, and still running strong. This scooter, as I was working on it, I actually started thinking has actually been, it is one of only three submerged scooters, three scooters at all that have ever been to CPR 694. That is 298 feet of ice cold fricking water in Lake Superior. And this scooter was there. Um, so how cool is that? Anyways, thanks guys for watching. Sorry for such a long video. If you've got any questions, Reach out, do the best we can to stay in touch. Uh, we're going to have the website up and running soon, and a bunch of the parts and stuff will be available on there. If you need it before then, uh, send us a message or send us an email. Uh, we've got uh, Sid at subseapropulsion.com and Bender at subseapropulsion.com are working now. Thanks again for watching. We'll do some more videos when I get time.